Good afternoon. My name is James Little from Mass Spec Interpretation Services. Today I'm presenting a video on using the NIST MS search with the Agilent Open Lab software for unknown identifications. On my website, a little Mass Spec and Sailing, you'll find other information on using the Mass Hunter software with NIST searches and even ChemStation with, uh, with NIST searches. But this is the first one I've made on Open Lab. And I've got some of the tips uh, that I've been put in this video. Uh, you search with the Agilent GCMSD, that's where we acquire the data. It goes to Open Lab and it's transferred to the NIST for the MS search and the identification of unknowns. The information supplied, or at least the majority of it supplied, was from Agilent, from Emily Adams, a product support engineer. On my website, if you go to my website, I'll just open the main page. There's a lot of information there. This one's under the Agilent Open Lab for NIST library searches, but it refers to several courses in here and some setup files that you might find useful. But it's all found on my page, but the links are within the PDF document that I'll attach to the YouTube video. So let's go back to the YouTube video uh, PowerPoint that I'm using. Go down to the next one. So these are the topics I will discuss, and I, I won't list them here because I'll just step through them very quickly. The first one is. Can you send Spectra to the NIST MS search program, uh, much like you can in Mass Hunter and ChemStation? Yes. All you have to do is get the Spectrum up. And of course, you got to have the NIST MS search license and the software install installed on your computer. And so this note, this is grayed out until the NIST MS search package is installed on the same PC as Open Labs. And then after you do that, you just go and right click on the Spectrum and say send Spectrum to NIST MS search. As easy as that. And when you go over, it'll automatically open up the NIST MS search and do the search. And the commands to do this are, it sends to the clipboard somehow, and I put a couple of details about how it actually works mechanically. Basis is it just sends it over and does the search. Uh, this is actually uh, an MS MS spectrum, I believe it's in source, but it's, uh, it's MS MS as opposed to EI, but it, it could do either. So the second thing, can you process the Open Lab Mass Spec file in Mass Hunter. Yeah, they're the same file format, so you can convert Open Lab CDS data to Mass Hunter format. And you can then analyze the converted data in Mass Hunter using quant, qual, and unknowns analysis. You cannot open it in the MSD ChemStation data analysis. And there is a conversion tool that you can access starting in Mass Hunter quant 11.1. .1. So you can see the plugin here, or not actually plugin, but just the software, the converter, and you translate. Here, so that I haven't tried that personally, but uh, Emily told me about that. Can you convert Open Lab files to NetCDF? Of course, NetCDF is a common data format that all the manufacturers share. And yes, with the plugin, you can do that with these post processing plugins. And so you just go down and you have it installed, the post processing plugins down here on the left, and do the conversion. And it comes out as a NetCDF file. And you could open that with AMDIS if you wanted to, or I use it with Wiley Know-It-All. Uh, you could use it with a lot of different things, or you could even take it and convert it back to another file format for another data system by using their importer of NetCDF. Before, data file locations. Here's just a list of where everything's located within the tree structure or within the directory of files that are acquired. And I just put that in there just to know where things might be found and what they actually are actually present in these type files if you wanted to maybe get another manufacturer to try to convert it to their format directly instead of having to go to NetCDF. Can library searches be performed with NIST, DLL, and then return to OpenLab? Yes, they can. So you could just do it within OpenLab and it would call the NIST executable, but instead of displaying it in the MS search, it would bring it back into OpenLab for display. What library formats are used with OpenLab? Well, they use the NIST format. So if you had a .l or some other format, JCAMP, uh, et cetera, you would have to use the NIST, lib to NIST utility, I've shown a screen capture of it, to convert it to the NIST format. And I put a link here to get to some more information about that. How do I add to or create a user library? Again, all libraries used in OpenLab are in NIST format. Thus, to add an entry, you first have to get it open within Open Lab, and then you send it to the NIST search. And then you can go into the bottom where it says the Librarian tab here at the bottom. 
And that allows you to add comments, uh, put structures with it, uh, whatever, molecular weight, molecular formula. And that takes a little bit more detail. So I really can't show you all here, but I do have a link for EI MS libraries, how to make them your own user one, part five of that uh, website that's on my website. And also one for MSMS -MS libraries that's on my website also in part seven. So if you want to do that, you need to dig through that and learn how to. It's not real hard, but it's not real simple. So you have to just spend just a little time learning how to do that. Okay, so the other thing is when you first set up the NIST search for use externally, you have to set up some parameters in either EI and MSMS. So I put in links here to quick start guides for EI and a quick start site, uh, guide for MSMS or tandem. But of course, what's important after you get them set up, you won't have to do this over and over again. You just save a user configuration within the NIST MS search software. Then if you might corrupt it or you change something you don't remember, you can just restore quickly restore the configuration and get back to the starting systems, the starting um, configuration that you use. So I highly suggest you do this after you get it set up. Please save it to save yourself some time in the future. The last thing is Agilent has a great open lab help and learning. I put a link to it here. Uh, that tells you how, and it's very nice. Like if I put in net CDF after I brought it up into this part, uh, it'll bring up the different pieces of information that I can click on so I can read additional information. So it's very well done, huge amount of information. It's easy to access and then apply to your needs. So I hope this has been useful to you. This is a really just a quick uh, overview of it, but uh, I hope everything's in there to get you started if you want to use Open Lab, but you still want to use in this search, let's say you might want to do a hybrid search, which they can't really do externally and bring back. Hybrid is very valuable, and I encourage you to read about it uh, because it allows you to expand the use of your database or libraries to things that aren't present in the libraries. It infers structures. So I find it very useful for identifying unknowns. So good day.